my first visit to Panna was in the early 2000s and the tiger numbers were already going down in the park. But it was just such a gorgeous park even, you know, with barely any tiger sightings. Any other park in North or Central India, even back then, was just chock a block full with tourists and there would be you know, all the jeeps zooming around. But Panna was different because there weren't any, it wasn't crowded, it wasn't busy. As a filming crew, it was great for us. We didn't have any interruptions. Whatever we saw, we, we, we had it all to ourselves. Then back in 2009, there was a tiger relocation program. You know, there were four tigers that were moved into Panna. And by 2010, they had their first litter of cubs. That's when we went back to Panna to film that and to film the sort of success of the relocation program. In the subsequent years, I've gone back to Panna practically every year. So now what has happened is that it has started getting a whole lot of tourists, which is great. It's great for Panna. All forest departments, all national parks, they have a restriction on the number of vehicles that go in. But the problem today is that it's a behavioral issue with tourists uh, where I just feel that they're not um, sensitized enough. In any tiger reserve or in any forest, any sanctuary, national park, there is a need for tourists, you know. You need the local community involved with the forest, with the wildlife. They need to see it as a means of livelihood. So the problem is that there is a lack of sensitization to the environment. You know, there was a time when people did not have mobile cameras or the mobile cameras weren't as powerful. So what would happen if, the, if there was a tiger sighting, then everyone would, as long as they saw it, they were happy. But now with social media, everyone wants to put it out there. So there's a huge, you know, anytime there's a sighting, there's a jostling for position. Everyone is trying to get in front of one another. So you can imagine that, you know, if there's a tiger which is sitting next to a dirt road or close to a dirt road in the bush. And there are all these jeeps that are climbing one on top of the other. The kind of stress that is causing to the animal and it's changing its behavior. So it's it's a it's a very dangerous situation, not just for the animal, but also for the tourists. So while we were filming in Panna for this, this particular series, I don't think we got a single shot of a big cat which was not interrupted by tourists. So typically, you know, I mean, we've been filming in forests for a couple of decades now. So we know sort of what a safe distance is. But now what happens is that suddenly you, you know, if you have kept a safe distance, there'll be other jeeps that are not content with that. They will be coming and parking themselves in front of you. So even when you're trying to film and you're filming an action shot, suddenly you'll have a head that pops up in the middle of your frame. It's one of those things that every time you see a shot of a tiger that's walking calmly and this majestic animal that's so comfortable walking through the forest and the forest looks pristine. Actually, what's happening behind that is like a constant noise of jeeps, people screaming and shouting, and it's absolute utter chaos behind the scenes. Shooting in a forest is never, never what you have planned for. It always changes. There's, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of unpredictability when you shoot in a forest. This trip for us was initially a seven day trip but we literally had no cat sightings for the first nine days tiger <laughs> so we actually had to extend our trip to 11 days and everything that could go wrong went wrong with you know bad weather in terms of heavy fog 
thunderstorms, etc. So whatever could go wrong went wrong. To a point that uh, you know, the other drivers and guys would point to us and say, "Hey, look at them! They've been around for ten days. <laughs> you know, they haven't seen a thing. So don't do so." Panna itself holds a very special place in my heart because it represents so much that is that works in a system. You know. Panna represents how our civil society, our communities, and forest department can come together for the sake of conversation, and that is such a positive sign going forward. Unfortunately, there are big infrastructure projects that are planned for this region. The biggest one being the Ken Bethwa linking project, and that is going to seriously threaten this this ecology um, that has evolved over a millennia. It's actually going to. Submerge parts of this tiger reserve, which is going to cut that habitat, prime tiger habitat, in half. There is no development without conservation. The two things have to go hand in hand.